What's up, my ladies and my dudes? How have you been? Hopefully you've had a great week or two since we last spoke. I know mine's been exceptionally busy, hence the late release of the latest video. Between my real life duties, fighting off novels, and looking into what games may come next for my channel, I sadly didn't get around to picking up the latest edition of the Daily Derp. But not to fear, I still managed to cram four hours worth of progression in today's episode of Nami Factory, episode 10. Now, last time we crafted this beautiful simulation chamber from the Deep Mob Evolution mod, I also stated that this lovely machine was the key to unlocking mass resources and power in our future. Sadly, we haven't had the opportunity to make use of it quite yet, but that is an issue I intend to remedy with today's episode. For now, let's get this thing hooked up to some power and out of my inventory. Now, I'd like to knock out a whole lot of machines that we need, and that also happened to be quests under our early game tab. But the primary goal today is going to be gaining the ability to produce infinite diamonds on demand. And for that, we're going to need to create a shulker data model. So let's get to it. We're going to start off with a very small but useful item in some situations called a crafting calculator. It's a very simple recipe, just takes a unit of black dye, one redstone dust, one iron ingot, and six stone. I'm not going to go very deep into how to use these as I have my own method, but it's a neat and convenient way to get calculations for large batch crafting if you want to do it. That more or less completes the getting started quest tab by the way, so let's move back over to our early game tab of quests. I'm going to be needing a lot of electrical steel, so we might as well get on with making it. We'll need to take one steel ingot and run it through an alloy smelter with a unit of silicone dust to get this new version of steel. This means we're about to put an even greater amount of stress on our iron supply. But I have a plan, sir. And it's tied directly to the simulation chamber, of course. All right, electrical steel has been acquired. We're going to briefly shift our focus to producing as much water as our hearts desire. Endervores are next on the docket. As our trusty guide points out, these are a multi-block structure that can provide us with an infinite water source and we can have them output directly into machines. We'll need eight fused quartz along with a cauldron to craft four endervore blocks. We've made the fused quartz prior. It just takes three units of nether quartz and a block mold in an alloy furnace to get a unit of fused quartz. Fortunately, I have plenty made already. So let's take this along with our cauldron and we'll throw these into our crafting table on a stick. And then from there, we'll retrieve our Ender IO Endervorce. That will complete our infinite water quest. I think I'm going to be placing these down on the back side to provide water to our steam dynamos going forward. So let's do that now. And we'll need to fill these blocks up just to get the water flowing. We'll get our old water block out of the way and we can see that the tanks balance between themselves. So adding the final two blocks and filling them in, we can see them fully fill up finally. It's almost like a vanilla infinite water source just containing a multi-block that can output to destination inventories. With our water needs managed, I'd like to next take care of the overflow issue that I'm having with sugarcane. To do that, we'll need a machine called an autoclave. The reason for this is that I'd like to make a vacuum chest, but to craft that, I'm going to need a pulsating crystal. Along with this crystal, the recipe just calls for some basic iron ingots and a chest. Now to get this pulsating crystal, I'm going to need to combine liquefied pulsating iron with a diamond in that autoclave, and this will produce the final output of the pulsating crystal. Overall, the autoclave isn't difficult to craft, being comprised of subcomponents that we've made several times already, so let's go ahead and get it done. Alright, quest completed, and now we'll set this machine up on the line at the end near our extractor, although I have a sneaky suspicion I'm going to need to move this around a bit later. Now I've used pulsating iron before, but it was pulsating iron that I had found in Lost City's chest. This time we're going to make it ourselves by combining pulsating dust with iron ingots in our alloy smelter. Now 
With that done, we can melt that pulsating iron down in our extractor. And move that across to our autoclave. Then if we toss a diamond in, we'll get back our pulsating crystal. Now we can combine that with our other materials and produce our vacuum chest. Then if we put this in our water trough right here, we'll be able to collect all of the sugar cane. And if we click this button, we'll be able to see the full reach of the chest. Now, being able to collect all of our sugar cane is great, but we're likely to run out of space to store it. Coincidentally, there is a quest that calls for all the things that we've already built for our sugar cane farm. In fact, the only remaining item, the void upgrade, solves the problem that I just referenced. What a coinky dink. We'll just need some basic drawer upgrades and some obsidian for this. So let's knock that out right quick. And then if we add this void upgrade to our drawer, it will allow it to hold all the cane we can send its way. And if it happens to fill up, well, it'll just void any excess sugar cane that comes along. With this done, I'd like to look at auto-generating another resource. This one is kind of the base of everything that we do in modern Minecraft. It's of course, cobblestone and the cobblestone generator. And as you can see in the quest from this device, we can get stone, dust, gravel, sand, glass, nether quartz, silicone dioxide, oxygen, clay, aluminum, and much, much more. We're going to be leveraging this device to begin producing what we'll call the big four resources. Stone, gravel, sand, and dust. As these are kind of our gateway materials to most other things that we'll need, without ever having to actually leave the base anymore. Never leave home. Never leave home. All we need for this is a bucket of water, a bucket of lava, and six steel plates. So, let's go get that bucket of lava right quick. With that done, we'll grab the other components that we need, throw them into our crafting grid, and we have our cobble generator. Now this is going to come in handy a bit later when we set up a processing loop, but for now, let's just change directions a little bit because the next quest that I want to work on is the soldering alloy. This substance is made up of lead, tin, and antimony. It'll also require one integrated circuit that we set to mode three. We put all this together in a mixer. So here's our circuit. This mixture will be used inside of an assembler and in a circuit assembler for various crafts. But as the quest states, we're better off just using regular tin in the long run since it can be produced infinitely via deep mob evolution. That being said, the soldering alloy is more efficient. And now let's get the problem child taken care of, which is antimony. We can get this from Stibnite, and we can get that by either going hunting for it or by using Nami coins. I'm going to just go with some Nami coins since they are infinite. And after a bit of mixing of the dusts with the circuit present, we're done with soldering alloy. We'll see if we come back and make more of this or not. It is, after all, like I said, a bit more efficient than 10, but 10 is going to become infinite soon. So, yeah. 
Now we've already added a new machine earlier with the autoclave, but it'll hardly be the last. I'm beginning to think we're gonna need bigger, better power output. So let's address that next. I'd like to go ahead and upgrade our current battery buffer to a 16X LV battery buffer instead of the 4X that we currently have. That way we have a larger buffer as we continue our progression. As you can see, it's not a difficult recipe by any means, but will allow us to house up to 16 batteries instead of just four. So, we'll swap out the 4X to the 16X, and I'll reintegrate the 4X later. With that, our buffer is now bolstered for better power sustain, so let's move on to machines again, this time focusing on the fluid solidifier. This machine allows us to put melted liquids into molds, and it's a fairly easy recipe for a machine that will give us a lot better efficiency on things like gears, turbines, and the like. We're going to put the solidifier straight to work by pumping out some gears that we're going to be needing in the near future for hoppers. All we need to do is to melt down some iron in our extruder, then move the liquid metal across to the solidifier. But I think we'll swap the position of the autoclave with the solidifier to make this easier in the future. It also helps a lot if we use the right mold, because uh, <laughs> this is the wrong one. All right, we're gonna go straight from that to the assembler, which is another component crafter, which gives us a big efficiency upgrade. This is going to be an important addition for us as we get ready to push into applied energistics if we want to have access to automated crafting. Now this craft is a little more expensive, needing two robotic arms, but it's all good, we got this. We're also gonna begin needing some new alloys as we move out of LV and more towards MV. One of those new alloys is going to be cupro nickel, which is a combination of copper and nickel in a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll just toss these guys into our alloy smelter and we'll pop them right back out and have cupro nickel. With the new alloy available to us, we're continuing to simply consume raw materials here. We need to get into the business of producing them, so it's really time to start our actual deep dive into evolution deep mob evolution to be precise and we're going to be kicking it off with the creation of a blank data model this data model consists of some fine gold wire a pulsating mesh four electrical steel plates and a basic circuit now if i combine that with a bit of zombie flesh we'll get a zombie data model of the basic tier the tiers on this will go up the more we let the simulation run we could do it manually as well by going out and fighting but for now we're going to stick to the passive route 
To run these simulations, we're going to need a very important substance called pulsating polymer clay, or PPC for short. To make this, we're going to need one clay block and some pulsating dust in an alloy smelter, which will yield four PPC per run. This will let us complete the simulated mobs quest as well. Automating the creation of this substance is very quickly going to become a top priority so that we can keep our simulation chamber running around the clock. Let's go ahead and throw this in here and get the simulation started. That will produce our first overworldian matter, even though we failed to get any pristine matter. We're going to let this run for a few moments. Now while that's running, let's go ahead and take a look at the quest that involves Overworld in Matter. As you can see, it's going to offer us several potential benefits. We can eat these things to gain experience. We can combine them with other drops from mobs for more items. We can even use these to upgrade and get other types of matter not currently available to us. Alright, so now that a little time has passed, let's go ahead and grab the outputs. Along with the Overworld in Matter, we've got some pristine zombie matter. But rather than pulling these out manually, I'd like to go ahead and set up our chamber to be able to empty and fill itself automatically. So I'm going to add some item conduit between the primary dump crate from our machines and the chamber. Then we'll add a filter to ensure that only PPC is what's inserted. With that done, our chamber will now stay stocked with pulsating polymer clay around the clock. And after flipping a couple of switches here, it's also automatically being emptied. So we're a step closer to automation. At this point, we just need one more simulation to go ahead and tick over from a basic model to an advanced model. This means that the model will now have a higher chance at yielding pristine loot, which is what we are really aiming for in the long run. The pristine matter allows us to collect stacks of zombie flesh, iron ingots, carrots, potatoes, and zombie heads. The iron is what we'll be after with this one, but there's a sneaky interaction with the zombie flesh that we can use as well. By crafting the zombie flesh with some overworldian matter, we're going to be able to produce an additional 8 iron ingots per zombie flesh. That's kind of massive considering that there's going to be a point in time where we will be swimming in overworldian matter, and iron is the basis for so many of our other metals. Just as I want this data model for iron, there's another model I want for diamonds, like we talked about at the beginning of the episode, and that's the Shulker data model. But to get to that, we're going to need some extraterrestrial matter. Luckily for us, Overworldian can help us to make hellish matter, which can then be used to make extraterrestrial matter. We're about to go ET, baby! We'll need to get our hands on some netherrack, though, and for that, we're going to need lava and a chemical reactor. Let's go ahead and knock out the chemical reactor first. It's not a difficult recipe. A few units of glass, some cable, a rotor, and some circuits. Most of which I have on hand already. The chemical reactor is another machine that's going to be a big part in all of our upcoming automation. To help with this process of lava creation, we're going to pick up a few forge hammers. Three to be exact. We'll set these up in a line to take cobblestone, smash it to gravel, gravel to sand, and sand to dust. All of these materials are useful to us in one way or another. You remember earlier I said they were kind of the big four. Well, cobble would make the big four, right? 
And because of that, I'm probably going to end up hooking up my cobblestone generator to these. For the netherrack that I'm wanting at the moment, we're going to use some dust. And if I take said fancy dust and insert it into the chemical reactor, along with a bucket of lava, out pops netherrack. Now, if we combine this netherrack with some overworldian matter, voila, we have hellish matter. We could manufacture the lava using slime blocks and redstone dust to create magma blocks, then break down the magma blocks into lava. But for now, it's faster to just go grab a boatload of lava using buckets. Okay, so I I'm wrong. This is still too slow. We've only got enough to make a couple of units of uh, ET matter here. It's time to scale up the operation. I'm just gonna go get a bulk amount of lava, so it's time for tanks. We're gonna be leveraging a little iron and get ourselves some Ender IO tanks. These will come in handy later as well. So with three tanks holding 16 buckets of lava each, I'm going to quickly stock up on lava, and then we'll be able to pump out all the netherrack we need. After combining all this together, we'll get our hellish matter. Then, with all that hellish matter and some enderpearls, we'll convert this to ET matter. Almost there. Let's go ahead and make a quick blank data model again. Now, if we take the data model and combine that with our ET matter and a diamond, we'll get our Shulker model. So we can start farming ET matter and pristine Shulker matter now. This will be our path to infinite diamonds and a massive power upgrade. But that's going to have to happen on another day because at this point, boys and girls, we're out of time. I'm going to keep it quick here and just say thanks for watching. As always, if you liked it, like it. And if you'd like to see more like it, smash the sub button. It really does help. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Laters.